What's up everyone, Kate here from MB Tennis. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. Today we have a little bit of a different style video for you guys, but I'm really actually amped to tell you about this stuff today. It's gonna to be for a little bit of a different audience and what we are gonna be talking about today is how to kind of boost your child's tennis game and how a parent can really impact their child's tennis career. You might say, well, every parent can impact their child's career, but sometimes, you're in a situation like me and you don't have maybe a lot of access to coaching or you do but you're a parent and you want to be more involved and I'm going to show you from my experience with my dad how a parent can be more involved on the coaching side of things and how a parent can get involved with practices and drills and how to really help out your player or child the best as possible. So without further ado, let's jump into it but if you're not liking subscribing please like and subscribe. We wanna to get to, to 10,000 subs, but we have a little bit to go, so if you do subscribe, that is very helpful, and of course, super thanks. As always, greatly appreciate it, so like and subscribe for sure. All right, so before we kinda of get into the five things I want to kinda of nail down with you guys today, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a background about why I'm telling you about my experience. So. For me, obviously come from a very small town here in Canada, not a lot of indoor facilities and stuff, so had to be very creative, and my dad and I really had to find some solutions for me to get to that next level. And a lot of it came down just me and him being creative. So if you are a parent, you might have to listen to these five things that I'll talk about, or even if you're just a coach, to make your player or child better. So one thing that was super helpful with my dad is he played professional sport. I don't know if some of you guys know, we have talked about it in past videos, but my dad played professional hockey in the East Coast Hockey League. So it was very helpful having that professional mindset kind of drilled into my head at a very young age. Um, so he kind of taught me uh, the meaning of what, you know, basic things like hard work, determination, um, being dedicated. So I'm pretty grateful to have those kind of attributes uh, being nailed nailed into my brain up here. But yeah, I mean, if you are a parent or, or a coach or somebody that wants your kid to, to kind of get to the next level but you want to be more involved here, you're in the right spot because we're going to nail down five big things right now that you can help your player with. Okay, so to kind of get it started, if you are a mom or a dad, in my case, it is my dad. He was coming on the court with me very early in my tennis career, right from the start. So point number one, if you're gonna go on court with your child or player, the first thing that I recommend doing is play as many mini tennis games as possible, okay? So normally, depending on your level or your age, your child might be at the same level or maybe a little bit better. It doesn't really matter though because this is a great way to get your warm up to kind of be competitive with your child if they are a little bit better. There's a lot of different ways that you can um, even out the skill level with touch games, etc. So we like to start every practice whether I'm running a coaching session with somebody or I'm playing with my dad and working on skill development stuff. We start everything with mini tennis. There's so much you can do. So we always start slices cross court, then we move into topspin cross court, throw in some volleys cross court, and of course we go to the other side. We like to throw cross court into the play because sometimes down the middle mini tennis can get a little boring and cross court can repl replicate, excuse me, more of a match like scenario. And if you are somebody with your child and you might not be getting on court as much or whatever, getting as much kind of match like scenarios is important. So every little bit counts. So that's why we are doing the cross court. So then we move over on the backhand side. Sometimes we even go with our left hand for a little bit as you guys may have seen in some videos. And then of course, slices, topspin backhand and volleys. So mini tennis is extremely important, especially if you're somebody with your kid, or player, child, whatever. Um, and there's many games you can play too. You can play just slices in the mini court. You can play just volleys. There's so many different things you can do to kind of get started from there. So it's a great starting point. Always start with mini tennis. So that is point number one. So once you move back, you're done your warm up, you're done the mini tennis, 
you want to play maybe some points from the baseline. So if you're not like if you don't have coaching certifications or you don't know how to feed balls and stuff or whatever that may be, there's still things that you can do with your player while playing. And I can give you a great example of that. My dad is 51 years old right now. I played with him yesterday. We had a great hit, but there was many, many things that I had to do to focus on that were like hard for me to do that still made my dad able to be able to compete with me and I'll kind of get into that later. So examples of this are points from the baseline. You can only stay inside the baseline. So for me, if I'm playing with my dad, maybe I'm only allowed to hit to half of the court and I have to take everything inside the baseline and you play points like that. My dad's about a 4-0 level so he can play but of course he's not at a college level, so this makes it difficult for me to hit balls inside the baseline, but yet I have to hit it to a specific target as well, which can be challenging for me. Sometimes I'm even losing these points because it's such a challenge for me. So I'm able to work on some skills there while he's still able to compete with me. Another example is one player hits slices while somebody else hits topspin. So stick my dad in a corner again that's this is something you can do literally stick your mom or your dad or your coach that can't really compete with you on a regular rally to rally base in a corner and you just hit to them so this drill we do often or game you could say is my dad will just slice forehands and backhands from a corner i have to work on getting low and hitting balls down by my ankles and hit it back to the ad court so his backhand side and you play points like that so there's many, many games you can kind of play like that. There's all the other ones where you can just play down the column, normal, so you are allowed to stay behind the baseline, and you just play down the column and you have to maybe hit into a specific target, four hands only. There's really a, an endless amount of things you can do. If you want more, maybe we can create another video for that, or ask me in the comments and I'm happy to kind of share some things there as well. So that's number two, you can play tons of points and games around the baseline with your player or child. The third thing you can do is play tiebreakers and, and, and things that put your player under pressure. So even though they might be way better than you, you can use what you just did in those games to put your player or child under pressure. So play a tiebreaker for instance where uh, the, the player only has one serve and they can only serve to the backhand and they must hit a forehand off the first return. Or maybe your player is really struggling on return so you're going to serve the whole time to them and they have to hit the return past the service line every time or if they're at a certain level it has to be past three quarter court. So there's tons of ways you can be creative up here to be able to play with your child and make it exciting for them, but yet make it demanding and challenging for them to kind of get better. And this is what I've had to do pretty much my whole life. And I mean, not to toot my own horn, but I mean, I was able to play NCAA col college matches and I'm still doing that now. And at the same time, my dad's been able to get way better as well too, because he's playing with me. So in, in the end, both of you are gonna get better. So that's kind of point number three. If you are able to do feeding drills or know how to feed or can play with the feed, live ball, hand feed stuff, there are some other drills that you can do as well. And one that we'll show here is an approach drill in which I approach down the line on the forehand. You can do it on the back end as well. I do do it on the back end to work on the chip slice. Feed in, approach, come to the net, volley would go cross and then throw up the overhead and put that away back the other way. So it's a three shot pattern down the line with the approach and then you hit the volley cross and the overhead goes back down where the approach went and then it would be the opposite on the backhand side. There's many other feeding drills that we can share with you guys if you would like. So just let us know in the comments or maybe we can even make a separate video out of that. All right, so the bonus drill we have for you guys is serving out a set. So we have done this before. It's really exactly what it sounds left. like. You're gonna serve out the set. So if you make the serve where you want it to go, you're gonna go up 15 love, you get two serves. If you miss, you go down 15 love. So that means it would be a double fault. So today I'm working on my slicer just because I thought it was a little bit off. I'm serving into the targeted area. 
if I don't make the target area on any of the two serves, I go down 15 love. So I could make it in the box, but that doesn't count. So working on down the T slice on the add and out wide on the deuce. And as I did well and progressed, we were able to move the targets into smaller areas. So I got up three love. And then as you can see, my dad is now moving the target smaller to make it more hard on myself. So that is how you do that drill. You can do with any kind of serve or targets. Point number four is very important. And this kind of will tie into point number five, which we'll get to too. And that is mindset in tennis. As we all know, tennis is a big mental game, okay? So it can be very demanding, especially for younger players. And oftentimes, this is where parents lack very heavily, in my opinion, especially if the parent didn't play sports growing up or doesn't know what it means when you lose in three sets and have a match point or you're tired and you don't want to go to the court. There's a lot of things that come into play with that and that's why having my dad playing professional sport was very helpful uh, for me to be able, for him to be able to understand what I'm feeling but also to guide me on what I need to be doing or pushing through certain moments or, or backing off. It, it really depends on the situation, but mindset. So the one tip I would really give about mindset, and I know parents are, it, it sucks. It's hard when your kid can't get it over the net or they're double faulting 40 times in an under 12, three, four match, or they didn't make nationals or they suck or whatever it may be. I understand it's hard, it sucks, but you really need to stay positive that is very very important okay they just want to go out and have fun they want to win too so it's not always the best thing when the parents are yelling on the drive home or saying why are you doing this or why aren't you doing that or we got to work on your serve it's very important to give positive feedback all the time because this is going to make the kid or your child feel good inside, obviously, but yet want to keep playing. And that's very important as well. A lot of times parents give a lot of critical or negative feedback and it kind of drives the kid away. And this will also develop a good coaching parent relationship as well, which is very vital and needs to be strong for this to work. That's something that my dad has done a great job of is giving positive feedback even when things aren't necessarily going well, okay? So it is very hard, I understand, but as much positive feedback and positive vibes to your player or child as much as possible. So with that being said, that kind of leads me into my final point. And we here, me and my dad, have created an ebook for you guys. And the book is called Small Town to NCAA, How My Parents Instilled a Pro Athlete Mindset in Me. We got eight chapters in here for you guys and even two bonus sections. This is just a short preview of what it looks like here. And to focus on your journey. So basically, this short ebook outlines all the things that you need to be aware of as a parent or a coach, and you can even read this with your child, which I would probably recommend, and it gives you little tips and tricks on how to navigate the junior tennis world. So we're gonna be selling this for $4.99, pretty cheap, some really good chip tips in there that I really think would be valuable to many people, and even, even this ebook can really help people that are playing that don't have a child and it's just you. There's many tips in here that you can that can help you mentally kind of get over some humps, I believe, as well. So we're gonna leave this in, in the description or somewhere big so you can see it and check it out for sure. All right, so to wrap it all up, this is a, a very big, bulky, crazy topic. There's many players that don't have a coach that you know m need help. So this is what this video is. There's many players that have you know a, a mother and son, or a mother daughter, or a father son duo, and that can be very good, but it also can go very bad. So that's why I'm giving you guys these tips, and that's why I'm gonna give you guys this ebook, an option to buy to really help out, as I think it will help you guys out. And 
if there's one thing to go back, it's to stay positive. So, so important to, to keep that bond, coaching bond strong and as well, parent bond strong as well. I know it sucks when your kid double faults, but you, you gotta stay positive, okay? So, couple tidbits there. Be sure to check out the ebook. Um, I'm really excited to see what you guys think. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching. A little bit of a different style video, but I really think it's valuable to some people out there. So thank you for stopping by. Take care and we'll catch you guys on the next video.